Hello, everybody. Are you ready to embark on this complicated quest? It'll be a quest filled with conflict, battle, and most importantly, creation. If you're interested, then let's start with Arc 1, the dice tray. I drew my blueprints on a dinky little post-it note, so I won't show that. But right now, I'm drawing the design on some PET plastic and cutting it out. I glued the pieces to some linen with E6000, which I learned is some of the smelliest crap in the world. I mean, the package description was no joke. I'm glad I opened all the windows despite this 30 degree winter cold. So not only was it super smelly, it was also super cold. It's all for the sake of crafting. Besides, you gotta set an atmosphere for an interesting tale anyway, right? Just checking to make sure I didn't glue the pieces too close together. And voila, it folds. I scoured the land of Joann's to find the perfect wood green fabric for this project. And I think the fruits of my labor were quite worth it if I do say so myself. I have three layers here. I have the lining and base pieces sandwiched between two fabric layers. Then I drew some guidelines in preparation for sewing. My first sewing action is to sew the lining and base pieces to one layer of fabric. The stitching you see here is only going to show on one side, which is the inside of the dice tray. Next, using that second fabric tile piece, I covered the bottom and just sewed along the entire edge of the tray. Now, this is the fun part. I learned how to use some leather making tools. With these tools, I learned how to put on metal snap buttons. I'll show you all the tips I learned from this two hour long process of trial and error. <laughs> Tip 1. Hammer the punch tool until you see it peeking from the other side. More so a must than a tip, but it's important to have wood around. It makes a perfect work surface and it's soft enough to hammer into. Unfortunately, I only had these tiny pieces of wood that I bought from Dollar Tree. It was tiny, but it was mighty. And it was at this moment I knew that I had messed up. I accidentally put the closures too close together so it wasn't able to snap close. Using some pliers I took like, mm, like another hour trying to pry these two things off. But it gave me time to rack my brain for a solution. And this brings me to tip number three. Snap the button together and rub some chalk on the back side of the closure. Then transfer the mark to the other side and it will show you where to hammer the second hole. You can use the same technique to mark where you need to hammer the first hole too. Moving on to the next chapter, we're going to be working on the dice box. I had to seriously dust off the cog wheels in my brain for this design. I didn't realize my brain was capable of such planning and problem solving, but then it goes to show that you don't know what you can or can't do unless you try it. 
And that brings us to arc number two of this tale, which is the planning and sewing phase of the dice box. I ironed this inner lining onto some more of that cute wood grain fabric. I made sure to face the rough side down, ironed the edges first, and then covered it with a damp towel to iron the rest. Per the design on my tablet, which is a better presentation than a dinky little post-it note. I once again just drew the design on some PET plastic and cut it out. I placed the pieces onto the interlining and fabric. I traced the shapes out and then cut them. As with most sewing projects, it's important to remember the seam allowances. The time is nigh, young traveler, to prepare the station for sewing. Here's the top of the dice box. And here's the bottom part. My plan was to make the dice box look like a mimic chest. And here I'm just simplifying the design, that way I can put it on the fabric and cut it out. A friendly reminder folks to reduce, reuse, and recycle. Although I do feel like crafting does create quite a bit of waste. It is fun trying to think of ways to use that waste in another project though. Right now I'm putting the design down so I can figure out how big I want the pieces to be. And then later I found out that I didn't have to do that because these quarters and pennies were the exact size that I wanted. That's okay, a little bit of wasted time builds patience I guess. Moving forward, I'm just creating my little shapes and cutting them out with ridiculously large shears. I ended up just cutting all my teeth the same size and just trimmed them down when I needed a smaller one. I added seam allowance and then we started the process of pinning. The entire pinning process was a little wacky, especially when it came to pinning the zipper on. In the end, the pins themselves look like the teeth. Don't get me started on the sewing. Sewing all these components together took so long and I had to pause so many times to adjust things. I had to rip the whole thing apart because I didn't line it up correctly and re-sew the whole thing. Honestly, I had a lot of fun with it though because it required so much of my focus and attention. It felt good to work hard on something that I actually enjoyed which spurred me on to do whatever I could to realize the end result I wanted. I felt almost like a spark of passion. Even though it turned out a little bit ugly, it was still my ugly creation that I spent time and effort on. But getting back on topic, I did have to trim the teeth a little bit because they overlapped a little funny. I was really happy with this little hinge that I created on the back. However, I wish I would have created one on the inside because when you open it up, it looks kind of messy. I think I'm just gonna have to make a series where I just recreate a bunch of things. <laughs> it's time for some relaxing hand sewing bits. I used some stuffing to make the eyes bug out a little bit, pun unintended, but also unintentionally, it kind of looks like a spider. I've just been using this hidden ladder stitch to put all the features on, but the edges come out looking kind of bumpy and spiky, so I'm wondering if there's another stitch that I can use to put this on a little bit smoother. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments. In the meantime, I'll just try to do a little research on my own. 
Although it's only the second time in this video, I've actually cleaned up my station like 20 million times already. Especially when I'm in the zone, my workspace gets cluttered so quickly. But here we are, clearing the station and prepping the area for the boss fight. I'm going to be putting velvet on the plastic pieces and assembling the skeleton together. I couldn't believe how much time and frustration this little part of the project took, but hence why I dubbed it the boss fight. Okay, so let me try to explain to you what's going on in these scenes. Guys, I hate to admit, but even I had difficulty following what I was doing. So in these clips, I have the end pieces that fit into the cap. I lined both ends with velvet and attempted to attach it to the inside of the lid using fabric glue. Now I have to admit, my choices of adhesives in this project were rather interesting, to put it mildly. <laughs> Basically, a lot of the frustration that came from this arc of the project was mainly due to my lack of adhesive. Er, lack of proper adhesives. Okay, so what I'm working on now is a middle partition for the upper lid. This little partition gave me a little bit of trouble. It was one of the parts I had to redo several times. For the final redo attempt, what I did was I cut the main lid piece into two, I stuck the middle partition in the middle, and duct taped all the pieces together. There is just a lot of trial and error involved, and you can tell that it was that part of the project to where I was getting impatient. Everything had been going to plan up to this point, and I was just getting really eager to see what the end result would look like. It's something I feel like a lot of people can relate to, but it's also a flaw that I would like to try to improve for future projects. Duct tape has always been the true MVP. You can tell I struggled to get this big main piece into the lid also, so I ended up peeling the side pieces off as well, and then duct taped that so it was just one entire cohesive piece. So besides the adhesives issue, I also came to realize two more things. Nothing I had would stick to velvet, and the velvet would not stick to anything that I had. And lastly, none of the magnets I had were strong enough to create the snap closure I had planned. The magnetic lid was just another difficulty that I faced with this arc of the project. And you might even notice later on in the video that I had redone it a couple times as well. So how I initially intended the lid to look like, I had the larger overall lid sitting perfectly on top of the middle partition, and there was a magnet sitting on the end of that large lid piece, and a magnet inside the tiny flap. I really wish that this initial design would have worked, because I really liked how it looked, and I liked how it functioned. It was just too bad that the magnet wasn't strong enough. Yet another mistake I ended up completely redoing. I thought it would be a good idea to glue the box inside of the skin using E6000, which it worked, but it just looks so squished. 
Cutting together the bottom box was much easier and enjoyable process. Probably because I was kind of getting a hang of what I was supposed to do now. There is only one slightly tedious thing where I just had to carefully place the velvet so that it would look and lay neatly in the box without any weird seams. But it just felt like another one of those things that I really enjoyed because it took a lot of my focus and attention. Using that trusty duct tape, I just taped everything together into one solid box and stuffed it into the skin. Here's me attempting to make another lid design, which it turned out looking really nice again, but spoiler alert, I ended up taking it out because it, the magnet just wasn't strong enough. Alright, so remember when I glued the skin to the box and it looked all squishy and ugly? Well, I ended up just tearing the skin apart from the box and stuffing it, and it looks much better on the outside. It's more full and has more of a body, but the only problem is I'm not quite sure what to do about the stuffing on the inside. Like. I don't have a solution for covering it up, so it's just going to stick like this for now. These next steps were a bit of the funner steps, boss fight over, thank goodness. All I have left to do is just to put some cute little details on him now. I just painted some cute little eye reflections and those characteristic black borders that are found on treasure chests. I used these little Dollar Tree embellishments to act as kind of like rivets that usually go on that black border. I just attached them using some fabric glue. I painted them gold and dry dusted them with some black to make them look worn and old. And we've made it to the final products. The dice tray turned out to be a really nice size. All the snap buttons do work, but a couple of them are a little wonky. I'm actually really happy with how this little mimic chest turned out. Not everything went as planned, and he's not the cutest, and he's not the most functional but he is one of the more complicated projects that I've ever tackled before. This project took a lot of planning and improvising and problem solving, which was honestly more than I thought that my little brain could do. But I'll add the dice tray and this mimic chest to the list of things I plan to redo in the future. And I hope you guys learned something along with me. Wishing you happiness and health. I'll see you next time.